Welcome to another segment of Market Overdrive. I am your host, Carla Mina, with Cole Banker. And um, we have a little technical support issues here. It's already started. <clears throat> I can't hear myself. Because we were listening to like 70s music in our ears. Whose idea was that? That's them. Back that the there. elevator music? Producer the elevator music? music? Now, now I can hear it. You can hear it? I don't it? think it was elevator I can't hear music. you, which is mm-hmm. great. It sounded like something that should have been on Skin and Max late at night, to be honest with you. I don't listen to Skin and Max. Skin and Max? I, just I go to bed at nine. Okay, I'm good. Great Hello. segment today. Another day, another Wednesday, another market overdrive. It's market overdrive time. <laughs> <laughs> It's the, it's the worst <laughs> intro ever. I mean, you know what? Yeah, the worst was it the Mexican ever. mules? Was it the Mexican mules is getting to everyone? What are you talking about? What are we? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, jeez. We are drinking on the job. <laughs> We're drinking on the job. <laughs> Police officers don't need to do this, but we can. Our beautiful Nikki brought us some uh, uh, meals because I guess she she's won. She's an award, she's award a, winner. Award winning. Award winning. Mule maker. Mule maker. Pinto bean, spicy something. I'm just kidding. Did, it's no pinto bean in here. But I, I never heard of a Mexican mule. I it's said, a poblano. What? She said a poblano. <laughs> a poblano. Tonic. Thank I'm, you. See, we love WGN because they really take care of us. And the beautiful Nikki, of course. I heart you. I heart you too. <laughs> Be careful when Nick says I heart you, though. Mm. He doesn't wow. really mean all that. Mm. How are you, Javi? I'm doing great today. I do love the headphones. You like the headphones? Yes, I do. I want to compliment you. <laughs> Thank you. I had to step it up. I felt like out of place. You guys had the nice Beats headphones and everything. I was like, you know, I got to step it up. I got to step it up. <laughs> Nick, <laughs> how do you Nick, feel? Nick, you told me those you're going to have pretty, blinged out those, diamond those uh, headphones. pretty heavy antennas, week. Week. though, man. Hey, right? Look you at look these like you things. can radiate the world on those antennas. I possibly can. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be surprised. That's my shirt. It reminds me of somebody. I'm going to figure it out before the end of the show who you remind me of. Oh, I'm pretty on. sure it's going to be someone super cool. <laughs> cool. Let's right. knock on these. Well, enough about us. Yes, Javier, you brought a special yeah, guest so to the studio today. Why don't you introduce your guest? I actually brought a really good friend of mine. We've known each other for probably over 15 years. We actually got our start at that same 5057 North Harlem office, um, and he's been doing really well in the market, and I wanted to discuss, a lot of our viewers are talking about, hey, you know what, Javier, we're thinking about possibly moving. We want to get into a better school district, but we need to do it in a time crunch. So today, I got Greg Chirone with uh, Interdome Realty. He's going to be helping us and assisting us in a couple of tips that we could give to our consumers in regards to what we can possibly do to make sure that we execute a home purchase on a short time frame. So, Greg, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me, guys. Tell Uh, us, Greg, tell us a little bit about yourself. We normally like to get a... um, little bit of an idea of you know your background your resume how long you've been doing this why you get into it the whole nine yards Uh, of course I love real estate so that's number one thing (laughs) why I'm I'm in it Uh, I've been in the business for about 15 years now oh Uh, yeah some time yeah look pretty young for being in 15 years yeah I started young (laughs) so did I I'm impressed all right but thank you but you know in the beginning I started part-time build up my relationship build up my network and um, you know and then been full-time the past 10 years Nice. So Look at that. 15 years. I, I, th- I swear I thought he was like three or four years in because he looks We so were like 20-year-olds no. in that office when we first started. We were 20. Yeah, we were, we in were 20s. 20. That's why. I remember those years. Yeah, so I'm 35 years, now. Times. I'm getting old. I know. Three kids. Oof. So yeah, one kid. <laughs> How many kids do you me. have, He's Nick? got three kids over there. Documented? <laughs> How many documented kids? <laughs> Undocumented kids? <laughs> <laughs> I plan to have a lot one day. Good for you. That's all I'm going to It's never yes. too late. So. We need more memetics in Today's world. topic. Let's get into today's topic. What was it again exactly? I just want to refresh it. Cause How to buy in a short time frame. You know, Quite I always kind of tell yeah. everyone anytime you're looking to do something on a short time frame, it's kind of similar like when you're going on a vacation in the last minute, right? There's going to be some sacrifices yep. that you might need to make. Yep. So I always kind of <laughs> discuss with people in regards to your wants, your needs, and your live withouts, right? What can you possibly live without? Because sometimes if you're in a short time frame, you might not get everything that you might possibly be looking for, but you might have to take a look at, well, what are the necessities, right? So one of the things that me and Greg were discussing the other day was in regards to school districts, sometimes what the cost of like private schooling could possibly be. That's something that could sometimes kind of weigh into the equation when you're considering possibly making an uh, an offer on a property and maybe offering a little bit over asking price. If you're really looking at the cost of private schooling, anywhere between five to 7,000, let's say you have a kid who's gonna be going to co- uh, high school or something like that, you're looking at about 28 to 34,000 in private schooling just for that term for high school. So if you're really looking to get into a desired school district, that might be something that you might put into the equation as to why you might be overbidding on that specific property. What are your thoughts on that, Greg? Correct, absolutely. And that's if you have one child, because if you have two or three, then multiply that by three. 
So I, I really think if uh, you got to look at the big picture all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, so when you're buying a house and you, and you see a house and there's multiple biddings and if, uh, if it's a good property, why not overbid a little bit, you know? Uh, because if you even if you're overbidding a little bit, but you secure the property, you got to look at the long term. You look in the long term, you're saving money on the schools. Uh, because if you send into private, especially if you're in a good uh, school district, you're gonna you're gonna save quite a bit. And then also, if you look in long term too, uh, the property might appreciate. You might get a lot of a lot of gains, or the value might might adjust. Like I have examples, like from properties people that bought, let's say in 2011, 2012. Back then, they're like, oh, Greg, should we do the multiple? Should we really go above price? And they were a little afraid. But now, <coughs> guess what? Now they're sitting at 60,000, 70,000 equity because the market adjusted and, uh, and, and, and they have the value in the property. Okay. Right. So, Greg, let's take it back a little bit to yeah, you. No Obviously, we're talking about buying in a time crunch, but I think more specifically for families, right? Relocating mm -hmm. because it is summer break and most of the parents want to get their uh, kids back in school um, or a school of their choice and they're relocating because of school boundaries. Um, you're a family man. You have three children. Absolutely. When somebody as a family tells you, I want to buy something and I want to be in a property by, say, September, no later than mm -hmm. August per se, right? Because of yeah, the schooling. Of um, and they, But then you're asking them to understand the market and understand there is a multiple bidding uh, market out there and you're saying we're going to have to pay a premium so not necessarily right. overpay for something I just think the timing you're gonna to have to pay a premium how do you educate your clients how do you make them understand and you're talking about m t uh, value over time Correct. I think that's a very significant mm -hmm. uh, you know advice like people have to understand that uh, but when it comes to paying a premium most even first-time buyers no one wants to pay a premium so Absolutely. how do you justify that Absolutely, and and that's why you have to, you know, you got to create that rapport and relationship with the uh, with the buyer. So it doesn't like it doesn't take like the first second showing, and they're gonna pay above asking. They're probably gonna see like about a hundred listings online, of properties like you know from any website from Zillow to Redfin, from the ones that I set I set them up, and then we're gonna do showings. You know, you need an agent that you know is aggressive, is on top of it, and probably going to be. Or do willing. you need a, an agent that's a, a king in listings and flipping properties and has all you, the new rehabs, <laughs> and everybody wants to buy you his might. rehabs? You <laughs> might, but people, even that, even that, people still. I mean, let's see. not be shy about it. You control a lot of that market, a lot of that single family up northwest, right? Yeah. God bless. So yeah. you have your own stuff to give them. I do, I do, and you know, and not only and that. And you might have to pay a little extra for it. <laughs> no, hey, no, no, hey. no, no, no. Greg and every Simone time I called here. you to let hey. me buy your Absolutely properties, not. you're like they're already under contract. I just can't get through to you. But What's if you going got an extra on? Ten grand, we can make something work. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. can I tell you a story? No. I literally texted him, called him, emailed him, oh boy. and was like, uh -oh. Hi, oh. "I'm gonna, br I'm gonna bring it out there." She's gonna bring it out there. I was like, "Greg, what is it gonna take?" This is a shout out for Stephanie, though. She made me shop with her for like nine months, and I swear his property was the perfect property for my client. And I was like, Greg, what's it gonna take? What's it gonna take? He's like, "You're very close." No, you're not. You're very far. I was like, "Just give me a number." So yeah, no, kudos to you. You really control upfront, a lot of that. But I had to give the right, you know, equal opportunity to everybody. You know how what? You yeah, know. you what? know how that goes. You know, I liked you, but <laughs> I like that. I we were it's friends. like I got to give equal opportunity to everyone. We're <laughs> no, not doing any favors. <laughs> but you understand but, uh, because as a listing agent, you understand yeah. that some some of these properties are flying off the market, and people Absolutely. are paying paying premiums for them specifically and, and, if they want mm -hmm. them now. Absolutely, and that's why it, it's really important to educate your buyer. You look know, like myself. I do I do listing and I represent buyers and sellers a lot. So I, under, I understand how it works on the seller side and the buyer side. So when I meet a buyer, we sit down, we go for coffee. I'm like, don't worry, let's go out for two, three hours. Let's just let's chat. And we go over Your all the- Your clients get coffee from you, huh? Yeah, I'm well, a big coffee guy. That's what I should do. I should take my clients out for coffee. You don't even hand over a bottle of water. You <laughs> I got <laughs> mules. You got mules. mules. I'm giving out mules. She gets them drunk before they come <laughs> into the offer. <laughs> or sometimes right they got- like Here, have problem. this mule, and then we're going to sign this offer. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. But I, I do agree with you. Education is key, specifically it because is. the market is crazy, and we read about it everywhere. Yeah. It's in social media, and we're always complaining <clears throat> as agents. We're posting on our timelines on social media. But it is true, and the consumer doesn't get it. They just know that they're stepping up, and they're getting more home. Correct. They're moving to the burbs. Um, so it is just it is it's just so about the timing. So let me ask you a question. Right. What are two things that, or a couple things that people maybe shouldn't sacrifice if they're definitely going to have to buy in a crunch, right? So it's like I know we have those situations where people are like, "Hey, my lease is expiring, mm -hmm. and we need to get into a property within the next sixty to ninety days." What would you say are some things that are definitely pivotal for someone who is looking to make that strategic relocation? I know, Carla, you do a lot of relocations and stuff like that, too. You've done that as well. Absolutely. What would be some of the things that you would say are definitely some things that you wouldn't want to sacrifice when you're actually putting in a bid or actually doing a home search? 
Y- you know, I, I depend. It goes case by case. Every scenario is different. Mm-hmm. So if the person is, is really important in the location and they don't want to sacrifice the location because, let's say, their mom lives around the corner and they need the mom for babysitting or a relative, so that's important for them. So maybe, you know, you sacrifice a little bit of the yard because you're close to your parents. Okay. Uh, or then some folks is like, you know what, I, it's not important for me in location. I want a bigger house. Okay. Uh, so it depends. It, it's it just varies. about the wants and the needs. It really, yeah. It okay. depends. Nick? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having like an audio issue. It's You're going having a lot of here. issues over there. Yeah, Why did you decide to move? Because I like it better here. No. You're too close. It's already done. Go back. Nope. <laughs> <sighs> I'm not giving the seat up. I'm just yeah. saying right anyway. now. Don't, don't you it. dare do it. I will stay here with all these spotlights look all over there. me. Look you at look this shiny forehead. I love it. Going back to shopping in a time crunch yeah. and for families, it's, mm-hmm. you know, family relocation, boundaries matter. I do agree with you, right? People have to understand exactly what it is that they're willing to not live with. I think as long as you're in the location of your choice, you can sacrifice condition. Unfortunately, some of these neighborhoods that we're looking at, for example, we have a lot of people who are moving from, say, um, you know, Lakeview, Lincoln Park, some Absolutely. of these neighborhoods in the east and are moving further west because they can get more square footage mm-hmm. for their price point, right? So as you expand and go a little further west, you're going to sacrifice a little bit of condition because unfortunately some of those homes are estate sales or you know step up sellers per se who are moving to further west uh, into the suburbs but uh, the homes are not necessarily all in turn key so I think it's imperative for buyers to start understanding what has sold in the last three months in their price point so they can Mm. understand what they can get for their money because a lot of them think well I saw that property closed but it was like a year ago and they're looking again at these websites third party websites Zillow (laughs) Truly that are telling them, oh, well, you can get, you know, for 500, something in turn, excuse me, turnkey. And in most cases, I mean, in na- neighborhoods like Edge, you know, like say Edgebrook, Saganas, yeah, right? <laughs> like in You're the n- nearby Northwest suburbs, you can't touch anything for less than what? Probably four and up. Four and up, yeah. 450. Yeah. 400,000. And even that is not completely turnkey. It needs, yeah, it's it not work. a gut it rehab. Correct. It's a, you know, what we would call a do it yourself or like over time built equity. Except some of our first time or buyers now, millennials, are not, and I know you're going to front yeah. upon this, but Millennial they don't talk. understand what sweat mm-hmm. equity building sweat, sweat equity is. They don't. They want it turnkey. And, and that's where we, we come along and we educate. You know, we educate, we show them the properties. And then also, you know, sometimes, a lot of times with uh, a lot of younger buyers, I'll go through the property and show, like, you know, let's look at the structure. Are the bones good? Is the, is the foundation it. solid? Is yeah. the windows good? The roof is good? I'm like, the kitchen and bath, don't worry. I'll give you some of my guys, rehabbers, that go to the wholesale and buy it, you know, and find cheap cabinets. So th- you got to look at the big picture. Yeah. You know? No, I definitely think it's just like the whole education process, right? Like it's always, you know, kind of walking them through the whole process of exactly Correct. what kind of inventory you're going to look at, what options they have. Like the other day, we had an open house on a property that's over on the northwest side. And it's definitely priced, you know, great pricing for the northwest side suburb, right? It's literally in a pocket between Edison Park, Jefferson Park, and stuff like that. So 200000 but that's definitely like a rehab type of property. Yeah. It's a property there you could put in 150,000 worth of rehab work, get yourself a property that's going to be valued at anywhere between 380 to 420,000. Well, you know what you're dealing with in that particular case. You're going to have a 203k or a home style rehab loan, Correct. but you'll be able to buy in low and then actually make it your own. So, Correct. that's the one thing I tell people sometimes. If you don't see the inventory, let's just create the inventory. Exactly. Yeah, but let's you'll be surprised how a lot of people can not see in. past. And I love that Greg, you said, yeah. look at the bones, exactly. right? If it has that separate dining room that you're looking for, and if that kitchen is spacious enough for you to, you know, take down those cabinets yeah. and expand you into could put maybe a beam in. Exactly. <laughs> you could customize. But see, that's the difference between you and a real who's probably never worked with flipping or rehab homes yeah. um, because you can see past what it's cur- the current asset's um, look of it all. And I love the fact that you talked about two or 3K loans, Javier, because a lot of our consumers don't understand that there, that there is that option with a 203k loan. But if you're looking in a neighborhood like say Edgewater per se and you're buying something for for 350 and there's not a lot of room there for you to go ahead and rehab a property with, you know, if your max is 450, can you work that those numbers out for us so we can understand better? Yeah, no, absolutely. Anytime you're going to go over the conforming loan limits, that's where it gets a little bit tricky where you definitely have to have a little bit of skin in the game. Right? What are conforming so, loan limits? Conforming loan limits right now here at least in Cook County, we're at 424,000, right? So, anytime you're going over the 424,000, you're kind of going into jump 
Buffalo territory, non-conforming. Correct. When you're going into non-conforming, you have to have a little bit more skin in the game in the sense that you're going to have it to have at least 20 to 25 percent down in most cases to be able to get a construction loan or a portfolio loan or just some form of temporary loan to at least get the property into that rehab, you know, aftermarket value and then go ahead and do your end loan at that particular time. <clears throat> so there's always financing options. And I actually come across a lot of different consumers sometimes who come across like hard money loans and stuff like that, where they're able to get a lot of that rehab money through some of these hard money lenders and then just yeah, but able I wouldn't to do recommend and that's to somebody who's yeah. an owner occupant. I mean, hard money loans for somebody who's going to live in the property. Well, what it really think, depends Greg? on the yeah, actual they could. owner. They, they usually don't do that either. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hard money loans typically come with only investment deals. Right. Yeah, most most cases it flips, but but it depend depend on the on the guy. You know, it might be a relative. Depends on the credit. You depends got a guy? on the asset it position. Might, you got a guy. I got a guy. Depends depends Italian. 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 We got a guy who knows a guy who knows a guy who finds a guy. It might be an older Italian guy that has money to spare, and he you know he wants to. And he'll be at your doorstep. You don't pay him much. He's a guy. He goes to church, and he wants to become a hard money guy. There you go. You know, so. Like you said, they go to church first. We got Pasquale on fast now, all right? Yeah, no. <laughs> He's also the person you give confessions to. <laughs> Anyways, There's always a ways, right? But there I'm is. You got to be creative and, uh, you know, you got to be positive And, you know, you always find a solution. I, I always say there is always a solution. What do you do for families who are shopping and they absolutely cannot find anything in the MLS? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's actually, believe it or not, uh, yesterday I closed a deal where it was, um, the guy had a specific, literally it was three blocks. Mm -hmm. He only had a search in three blocks. It was like almost impossible to find what he wanted. And he saw by owner sign. Mm -hmm. And he called me like, Greg, you know, I love you. We've been working for three years. I'm like, Sounds listen, don't worry. Send me a picture of the by owner sign. So you could literally, and then I worked it out. Mm -hmm. I worked it out. The by owner, we became great friends. I did dual agency. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they both agreed. They were happy with it. And we closed. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you could literally just cl cl uh, call the by owner uh, people or even send like uh, do a mailer. Right. Like I'll do a mailer and do like, you know, I have a great buyer. I'm like, why don't you call me? And maybe I could sell your house. Okay. Uh, there's many things. You could do even Facebook uh, sponsor, like, you know, uh, uh, advertisement mm -hmm. and, 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 and hit a certain area. So there's many things. You got to be creative. Again, I really believe like a buyer got to find a good um, – an agent that's on top of it. Yeah, right. no, absolutely. That's, um, it's kind of like one of yeah. the things that I offer some of my real estate agents in certain cases. Like I work for a bank, so a lot yeah. of the times we get a lot of lists of like REO properties that are probably going to be going on the market pretty soon. Absolutely. So yeah. a lot of the times it's just kind of having like that quote-unquote pocket listing, right? So it's a yeah. listing that is not currently on the market, but we coming know it's going to be coming down the pipeline here pretty soon. Yeah. So it's just a matter of having that network and being strategic about what you're going to do. Like a lot of the times I myself as a lender, I kind of assist my home home buyers and my real estate agents in that process because because of the vast network that I have, a lot of the times when I have a realtor telling me, hey, Javi, I have a property that's going to be going on the market in about 20 to 30 days, I use my network to kind of share that information with everyone so that that way we could better assist each other. Right. So a lot of the times is, you know, that continuity and just being in the industry for 10 plus years Absolutely. gives you that network so that you can really exercise those properties that are currently not on the market, maybe capitalize on those opportunities as Absolutely. well. Yeah, I completely Absolutely. agree. I, I mean, believe. we're plugged in into the network where we know, like you said, Javier, just to tie back with what you're saying, you had a prop. I had a property that was coming on the market, and you said I have like 40 buyers that I can send this listing to, right? Yeah. Right. And you sent it to all your your entire network as well as the agents, all the other realtors that you represent that you work with, and you were able to disseminate my listing, my new listing with your network. So always work with someone that is very plugged into the industry that is. For Transacting, and I'm looking at you because what are you doing? I am doing nothing. I'm listening. I'm just sipping over my there. tea. You're just like <laughs> at, you, just you know Chuck E. Cheese, the little <laughs> monkey that sits at the with the keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> what is wrong with you today? Nothing. I'm listening. Anyway, N Nick is a good guy. Thank you. I didn't you know, say he was thanks, a bad Greg. guy. I'm no, just, no, I'm I just like getting it. warmed up. I'm letting the conversation go, and eventually, <laughs> don't worry, you will get to hear me sooner or later. He's coming in. I'm not looking forward. Oh to yes, that. you are. Okay, but what I was saying is work with someone, align yourself with yes. someone that has access to pocket listings or has a network of colleagues that, I mean, I sometimes, uh, kudos to Gaspar, Becky, right? We just tried to put a deal together with Becky and Sonia. They, uh, they told us about a property that made the deal may be falling apart, and then we weren't able to buy on that one, but then they put something else in the market, and, of yeah. course, there was bidding wars. And, you know, you just have to work with someone that understands the market and that has a network of colleagues that are able to help you facilitate that listing for your buyer because there's not a mm -hmm. ton of uh, inventory. Correct. All right, so the topic of the show is basically five great tips on how to work under this distressed urgency. 
right? Mm -hmm. Where you need to make a decision. You don't want to be pressured. You don't want to overpay. Um, even though well, pressure words, is there. Well, the pressure is there, but you don't want to have any more added pressure, if you will. You don't want to overpay uh, on a property, although bidding wars happen and it feels like you're overpaying because that's the nature of a bidding war. However, you've given us two great tips so far. I've heard you say sometimes as an agent you have to go out and reach for sale by owners to make Absolutely. a deal work, even though it's not listed on MLS. Another one is it sounds like you personally take it upon yourself to find a property for somebody in a specific area by even going towards social media like a Facebook geotarget or a Twitter geotarget yeah. and say, hey, if you're interested in possibly selling your house, I have somebody available as we speak right this moment. Right? Yeah. That's two. That's two. <laughs> Hate to put you on the spot, but it's my job to put people yeah. on the spot here, right? <laughs> yeah. So no. I got to hear three, four, and fives. You want to spit it out? You want to spit it out? Or, of course, we can let our guests give us a third or a Between me and Carl, four. I think we should, we, we should come up with them. Yeah, why are we letting them, them yeah. come up with right. ideas three, four, of how five? to help people buy? We're not agents. We're just sitting here. You know, you know we, we do have another issue I'm on our hands. Really. Yeah, yeah, as lenders, yeah, exactly. we have to deliver this closing oh, within a certain amount of time. Oh, you're just waiting for a contract. Oh. So you realize contract that so we're that the this condition. This isn't our job. job. This isn't our job right now. Our job is to finance it once there's a contract. Should I give them the skinny on that, You guys have to put under contract first. Share the secrets of the equity partners, girls. Okay, this is what the girls and I do. We actually keep it clean, PG, please. <laughs> I said the girls and I. Like I said, keep Araceli, it PG. Thank Lucero, you. Jeannie, and I, my team, Equity uh, Partners. What we do during the weekday, not nights <laughs> or weekends. I cannot win with him. Okay. We actually canvass neighborhoods. We take on a day twice a week where we're canvassing these, uh, the neighborhoods of our clients' choices mm -hmm. and we're leaving notes and saying we have a buyer who wants to move into your neighborhood. We've exhausted the MLS. Nice. And seriously, there is no other way because door knocking is the only way to do it because Absolutely. there is no inventory. People don't even know that they have equity in their homes or that they can go ahead and sell to us. And we're going to pay fair market value. We're not just going to say, you know, this is but what are you. Want. My clients understand the market, and they understand there's nothing else available. So if everything is pending on the market, and everything else has sold, and there's only but two properties, and we've already seen those two properties, we understand the marketplace, and we're just there to facilitate. Maybe that seller doesn't want to deal with showings or the but inconvenience. And we're working with a lot of multi-unit prop buyers, and the tenants don't want to be bothered. So we, we okay. the transaction is a little bit easier when you're working directly with the seller. Let me just jump in here and say this though: what? you're sending, you're canvassing the neighborhood, and that's actually a very good. And so that's a number three, a legitimate really number good three. approach. Yeah. But you just Absolutely. said something in there that kind of struck me a little bit odd, um, which is normal of you. You, I'm sitting on my couch, watching the game in my underwear, completely happy in the neighborhood I'm living in. I have no interest <laughs> in selling. No, have no. It's hot. It's summertime, right. so I have no interest in selling my right. house. <laughs> I am when I go out. Oh, you go out? Um, right. right. But when I'm at home, it's just in the underwear. I, it's right. a crazy I have no image. In my I don't house. want a picture, but okay. And, and, get it and out here of my we head. are. I get a knock on the door, and hopefully it's Lucero, not you. And I answer the door in my underwear. And someone says, we have a buyer for your house. I'm sorry, but you're nudging me to sell my house. I'm not knocking on your door. I'm leaving the note there. You know what I mean. Yes. I'm, just, I'm just putting some color to the whole experience. But so we now, don't want your color. If I'm selling my house... I'd be expecting something a little bit better than, quote unquote, market value, wouldn't you? If you're selling and you were of just going to sell, of course, right? But we're we're seeing so fair really market. market. There's okay. There's value in a lot of things, right? We understand money is a commodity and time is a commodity. If someone doesn't want to bother their tenants, in the case of a two flat situation, we can facilitate the no showings, not bothering your tenants. <clears throat> it's just a sale. My client's going to give you fair market value for this property. It's going to appraise out. We'll take it in some cases as is, so you don't even have to make the repairs that you were dreading making. And we have a willing and able buyer that can close in 45 days what is wrong with that situation i don't ask for more okay so you're going to negotiate for a higher you, premium so if we're my obviously willing... not going to be buying nick's house that's definitely for sure but i might be the only one in that three block location that's right. even entertaining the idea at the end of the day but we're if, talking about going above and beyond to get somebody guess, properties because there's no inventory i guess what i'm trying to steer towards is is this urgency and lack of inventory and this absolute need for you to move your family in a school district correct yes uh, still puts you under the gun that you're going to pay a little bit higher than you really 
Of course, be. because you're talking That's about that really. being stressed about the process. But I'm sorry, you should have started shopping like six Two years months ago. ago <laughs> because I yeah. always say your property will sell if you have to sell your property, sell it. Let, put yourself in, put your stuff in a storage. And I'm sorry, make yourself flexible because if you're not flexible, you're going to lose leverage. And in in in, the, in this case, mostly it's cash. You're going to have to pay a premium for moving in a rush and identifying a home because these are marketing campaigns. You're talking about geo farming on social media. Mm -hmm. entering the zip code and targeting I have a buyer we want to buy in this area maybe putting an ad on in a newspaper those are like marketing and it doesn't it's not overnight it takes time right because right. people have to read it they have to it think does. about it then they're gonna call you I mean we've had many cases where I had a family that the the daughter was going to be relocating the mother into a home like a senior home and it was a great opportunity for us we got it for a really good price and the client was happy we actually helped them move out we hire movers we hired an estate sale company that came in and took care of everything for them and we were able to make that purchase and my client was happy to move in and the other family was happy that they got fair market value for their home and yeah in some cases we do pay a premium because we want that property greg right, everything right. you're going to pay for a premium it's like if you book a ticket at the last minute you're it's always going to pay a little bit more on it and if i you bet you it's going to be less than in being in a bidding war where somebody tells yeah. us give you give us your highest and best and you're bidding yourself or maybe yeah it depends but also we could look at you know i go with my clients i'm like you know what if this property is a little bit let's say it's 20 30 000 above what the market fa uh, fair value is. Let's look at it. Let us let me fill out the agent. Let me fill, fill them out, see wh where they stand. Maybe they want an offer. Maybe we could, you know what, that property that looks like it was overpriced, it ends up being in the budget. Let's let's so, go ahead and, and like really educate our clients, so our consumers, on what is overpriced in this market. I don't necessarily think anything is overpriced. If it's overpriced, it's going to sit on the market for more than than market market average time on market. And there's these little cool tools that the MLS provides us that we can uh, we can say what is the average time on market. The average time on market is 15 days, and that property has been on the market for 20 to 30 to 60 days. You're overpriced. Then you're overpriced. But if you're in a multiple bidding war, that property was never overpriced. It was strategically priced you're to right. generate multiple but offers. That's where there's, it's a sneaky situation. You hear it time and time again. Agents are starting to slightly list under what they think is exactly valued. underpricing. And then that thing turns into somehow miraculously a, a non-appraisable property yeah, because it's overpriced. Out. Yeah. So that's that's a very you know, mm, well, that's a conversation that you yeah. definitely have to have with the consumer, gotta, right? So it's like you, I had a specific uh, situation like this happen in Park Ridge, and it was a property that we went under contract for five hundred and seventy thousand. And I remember the agent specifically telling me that there was absolutely no way that the property was going to appraise for five seventy, but the buyer was willing to pay twenty thousand dollars over asking price because they had three kids that they wanted to have in that school district. They took a look at the cost of St. Pat's; it was going to cost them about twenty eight thousand a yep. year to put those three kids at St. Patrick High School. So for them, one year of private education Was paid for that absolutely. that over asking price. Oh, yeah. So they, for themselves, they knew that they were going into that situation. Appraisal did come in light, came in at 545,000, and they ended up paying for the, the remaining portion out of pocket. And I remember at first glance, I was like, you're really you're you're buying over, but they told me they're like Javier. We think that the appreciation value in Park Ridge is exactly. definitely going to be there, and the fact that we're going to be paying about close to thirty thousand in just high school tuition to put our kids elsewhere, based off of where they were living at at the time, it made perfect sense for them. It's so it's valid, all about right? numbers never the... lie. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. No, you're If right. you ever do the numbers, you know you the specifically, <laughs> they will always add up. You know, so that's the one thing. <laughs> yeah. It's like if you really want to get into specifics, <laughs> crunch the numbers and really see where you need to be. Right. It's a plus or minus, right? If you want to be in that location, you want to be in that school district, unfortunately, we have to sacri make sacrifices and it's spending that, that money. And, and like you said, Greg, it's over time, right? $10,000, $20,000. Correct. That, sorry to interrupt you. So it might be, it might be, it seems like you overpaid, but mm -hmm. if you crunch a number like Javier said, it, it actually made sense. Actually, they saved money yeah. in the long run. And then it might, it might be too, let, let's say they lost, what about if they would have lose that house? Another buyer would have paid. And right. then guess what? The values went up for the area. So guess what? Then the next house that comes up, you have to pay more. Mm -hmm. Because your appraised value, now somebody cash came in, bought that property, and now you're paying more for the next house that you really probably don't even like. Because now the comp is there. Exactly, because the comp is there. Exactly. So it's strange how it works, but you got to, I think, like you said, you got to look at the big picture. Right. Absolutely. You have to understand, and we as realtors and investment consultants, we have to help our clients understand it. And you're talking about a savvy investor who's maybe, or a buyer who's looking as a step up and they bought before. But when you're talking about talking to a first time buyer, and unfortunately anything in that $300,000 threshold, it's, it's, 
there's not a lot of inventory. So we're finding right. that our buy our first time buyers are seeing this this is shocking to them because they want a good deal, right? And perception is where you buy some it's listed at three and then you get it for two seventy five, two eighty five, yay, we got a great deal. But then you're listed at three and then now you're you're paying three and a quarter, you know, three fifteen and you're like, I didn't get a really good deal because I overpaid. And so I think it's all about the the mentality of the marketing ploy, right? It, it is always mentality and the confidence too. You know, we could see it from the, you know, the when when the market was doing not that good and people didn't have confidence, they would they wouldn't pay the extra money. And now they are. But also, I think I always ask my clients like, how long you plan to stay there? Mm -hmm. If they tell me like, you know, I'm just planning to stay there a couple of years, then a couple of years, yeah, let's do our math, let's be careful mm -hmm. because it's going to be hard. Maybe in one two years, you know, three percent average goes up to gain that value. Yes. I don't want to put you in that. Good but idea. if they're gonna if they're thinking about staying there five ten years and raise their family. Then I'm like, you know, you gotta look at the, you know, in the long run, long term picture. Time. Yeah, long term yeah. picture. You're, yeah, you're absolutely. Because okay. especially you like for okay. me, like it, uh, it always goes. That's why I always say, do the interview, do the your intake with your client. Because like for specifically, a lot of times when I get people who are looking to like move out, a lot of the times, at least for me specifically in my situations, you guys might have more toddlers and stuff like that. It's a lot of high school kids. Yeah. So I always tell them, be like, you always have to think about like well, you're going to become an empty nester probably in about five to seven years. These kids are going to go to college, exactly. and then all of a sudden the kids go to college, and maybe they're not living at home. So it's always about the long-term goal, right? right? And then just put in the proper plan of action. Long-term goal. And another tool that you can use, I don't know if you, you have access to this, but we have a market action report, which basically tells us like the average time on market, but also what has sold. And for example, we're in June. What sold in what what? Uh, how what sold in June of last year and you know so people can calculate appreciation mm -hmm. over time because even if you're looking at a two to three year um, stay you can still get some appreciation in it and be able to stay in the property of your choice or in the location of your choice and we're talking about families who are shopping in this you know summer market time crunch um, they're typically going to stay there for a longer time and they're looking for their kids so you're talking about That's high true. school grammar school ele right elementary school is a big significant reason why people are moving right now elementary. Elementary. So I guess as long as you have uh, the bones right in the property that you mm -hmm. like, then you can go ahead and do a rehab loan per se or um, two or three K loan. Right. And you can get into a property, even if it doesn't look the way yeah. that kitchen that you imagine and you want it, you can always customize it. And even with flips, you know, you, you know, find it that they're not they're, they weren't rehab to where you want it. I've had clients say, I want to buy this oh, property absolutely. and they pay, they pay a premium for a flip because it's turnkey. And then they're like, but I hate the counters and I, I would have preferred the white cabinets from the other house. Yeah. And now I have the mm -hmm. mocha color ca cabinets. This way you can customize and you know, right. you're buying a 275 and you know, appraising out at 450, but you only dump in 25 or 50,000 into the rehab. I absolutely. think that's a good deal. Right. Everyone's replacing kitchens and bathrooms every five to 10 years anyways. Yeah. You got it right. Exactly. So what's the difference? Right. All right. So what do we do? We got four. We got four. I got four. Wait, let's rehash them real quick. One, two, three. We have, no, we're at four now. We have hitting and for sale by owner. Mm -hmm. Okay. Social media attack on behalf of the agent. All right. Okay. Direct marketing. Traditional okay. canvas marketing, I guess yeah, what you call marketing. it. Yeah. Going from door to door. Yeah. Um, what was the fourth one again? We just uh, too many Moscow, Mexican mules. Sorry. Too many Mexican mules. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. What's the fourth one? Greg, what's your fourth one? No, we had four. I we had four, I think. The rehabbing? With, okay. with <laughs> find, finding a, finding attention. a property, no good no property. Supposed to be coordinating the show from that Wait, seat. Hey, you know what? <laughs> yeah, you're in the driver's seat. Yeah, you're in the Step driver's seat. Step up your game. Step up the game. Okay, right. what so are we're the at number four right now. Okay, right? which are finding a good property with good bones, good structure. Finding a property with good bones so that you could go ahead and do How a does rehab. That speed up the process, huh? Because then you have more options. Yes. Instead of looking like for a property that has white and white cabinets, you're looking like a grandma house, oh. and there's many grandma houses, and okay, you have so options. In that sales, 70s right? warp, you know, when you States walk in, you have pink sorry. tile so and yellow kind of, tile kind of everywhere. something that's not ideal, but, you know, getting the price the and Sacrifice conditions for location. Sacrificing conditions so that, that way you can rehab And get creative later. with the rehab right. options. And some oh, of those financing solid. options. They're better than some rehabs, actually, believe it or not. Yeah, because you can right. customize your finishes. So. Okay, 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 gotcha, gotcha. Grandma's house. Buy grandma's house. Estate sales, Nick. PC. What, there's no it state, could be a grandma house that don't just always moved out. exist. Dick's house is probably looks like a grandma. What about house? an investment option? Have you guys well, ever thought well, about well, that? So, like, I've I, had to do that a couple five. times. You can't deliver number five. You're not the realtor. Hey, it's a, it's an investment option. Can though. I back? definitely think I've had to flip a couple properties from primary occupancy to investment occupancy in certain cases. Okay. Because maybe you have to take a look at you know what this <laughs> is in a long term goal, but it's a really good investment option. Maybe we can use this as a temporary vehicle until we find That's that long term true. property. Mm -hmm. Right. And what was that? Hmm. So he, he, let's say I just like, whoa, <laughs> everyone <laughs> over your head. So what about 
finding a property that maybe isn't ideal for you or whatever for your family, but finding a really good investment option. Maybe you find like a, a condo. Flat? Maybe a condo. Uh, maybe you okay. find a condo that's reasonably priced as opposed to renting. You could buy a condo, then later on convert it into an investment until you find the actual true property that and you want to find. And you're saying use that to get you in the school district. Yeah. Or maybe even a multiple family, like Carla loves doing the two flats. <laughs> so maybe flat. maybe a two flat. Maybe a two flat. flat. Two and maybe me. it works out. Possibly. And they could stay I don't know about number year. five, man. I don't I'm know. Right what are you thinking? You were doing I, good until you, and I just figured out who you remind me of with those help with those oh headphones. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna share it. I'm uh, gonna give it to uh, you after <laughs> the show. Let's go for it. <laughs> but okay, I'm gonna think of a picture. Can we please stop picture. being okay? <laughs> we're not five. bullying our colleagues five, in the studio. We're not bullying. Number 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 five. What about the agent finding a really good agent? What? Well, no, we I mean, we're under. I think we're under. Finding a really exactly good agent. That's think, number five. I think that's kind of no. That's a cheating number five. That's a cheating, that's a cheating number five. Number, because <laughs> we're under the premonition you found a good agent if this okay. person's already willing to. Right, so he's uh he's you know he's go out all the way to Facebook <laughs> or dig up for sale <laughs> okay. by owners. It's so, already a good agent, okay. right? All right, all right. Come on, come on, come on. Don't cheat your way out of market overdrive. I'm gonna give Greg an opportunity to redeem himself. This is the mod squad. This is the mod squad, not the fraud squad. We got to come up with real good stuff. Good standards. What do you do for your clients when you? You dried out. There's nothing in the MLS. Everything's pending. There's only that no one. No one's active. responding to your direct you mail. No one's no. doing your Facebook I'll advertising. What, what, what does it, it get down it's to? It's really it gets down. They got to be comfortable, and it's educa uh, educating them, showing them properties, showing them different options. Maybe you got to do 15 showings. Maybe 20. Maybe 25. They got to be comfortable because what happened? A lot of my clients end up being like they become. They become realtors. They know so much about the market. They learn so much. Never. They don't, don't ever become, say Yeah, that. they, they don't, don't want to do it anyway. <laughs> they're like, Greg, you're crazy. <laughs> you're still working at 10? But no, but they get educated. And yeah. so we've been in different houses, like from, from the rehab house to the grandma house to... So they know so much or like where it gets to the point where they're like, they're like you know what? I, you know, they're educated. Right. And I, I think that's... Uh, a lot of my clients, that's what I... You know, that's what I work out with them because... It's hard sometimes to find the right one, and they they have to understand, feel comfortable because not all it's they don't believe not believe the agent, but you know they believe the agent, but they have all these sites, you know, sending them property, so they think always there's something better. So you're like, you know, well, let's go out there, right? And, and I and I love it. that you're saying about educate them so, and understand the market that where they become as savvy as maybe a realtor, absolutely. but as you know, as investment consultants and realtors, that's truly what we're doing. We're out there in the trenches. We're seeing the markets. We're seeing what's selling, right? So mm -hmm. I think it goes back to education. And Javier, you keep mentioning the intake. I mean, I always tell my team, do not take out a buyer until we sat down and had that one-on-one -on -one consultation. Because you want to educate them and go back to my, my example earlier where show them exactly what has sold in the last three months so that they can be like, wow, or even one month ago or what's yeah. currently under contract. And bec under contract, you really can't gauge as to what it's going to sell at, but you can understand based on what has sold like what people are paying for specific properties and in the condition and the number of bedrooms and the size. Uh, but going back to how do you create inventory for someone that is looking for something that perhaps maybe a shiny penny is what we call it, right? They understand the market. They understand we're going to pay a premium. One of those things that we do is obviously canva canvassing where we can find something and it may be direct mail, right? But another thing that you can do is also, and ask from your realtor, is to look at the MLS, right? Somebody who sold five or bought five years ago may be in the market for selling, for buy, for selling now. Yeah. So maybe send out direct mail to them and find out if they're looking to sell their properties. Um, that's another way to create inventories, and this is what we do for our clients who are specifically looking what I like to say, creative budget, right? We're in that threshold where we can't find th find everything because every we're in bidding wars and we're just tired of competing with for the same property. So we'll go ahead and create our own inventory. But remember, you have to give yourself time because this is not overnight. It's a marketing campaign. So canvassing, uh, Facebook ads, going back to what sold, oh, who bought five years ago and solicit them directly. Um, also cancels and expired, right? We know somebody tries selling maybe in the fourth quarter of last year maybe yeah. they're ready now maybe they had a reason why they took it off the market you have to be able to create that also go to the city find out who's pulling permits right we've had we had jo uh, dazzling yeah. Talk Dazzling. about, you know, coming going to the city, finding out who's pulling permits so you know what pro projects are going to be coming in. You can contact that um, that developer directly and find out it, what kind of product are they bringing on the market, and maybe it's a good match for your client. There's also distressed That's mortgages. True. One of the things that I sometimes get from uh, a lot of the credit bureaus sometimes to sell this information, but you can actually look up people in a specific geo code and actually see if maybe they might be 120 days to 160 days behind on their mortgage, and those might be prime candidates that you can possibly discuss to see if you might be able to do a short sale or might be able to do something 
something before they actually lose a foreclosure. So it's always a matter of finding and identifying situations where you might be able to capitalize on opportunity. Obviously, someone who's behind on their mortgage for four to five months might be interested in selling that property, even as a short sale. Right. So uh, the key is align yourself with someone that's hardworking, not someone who's just going to wait and say, hey, did you see something you like in the MLS? And they expect you to say yes, and I want to buy. This is someone who's going to aggressively seek and create inventory for you based on your criteria, Correct. especially if you're working with that very creative uh, budget where, you know, you may not be you may not be able to afford that neighborhood, so we have to go to someone directly that may be in, in a distressed situation. I mean, Cook County Records for someone that may be in litigation or someone that may be going through a divorce that may need to liquidate that asset right away. Um, so there's always options. You just have to make sure that you align yourself with the realtor that's willing to put in the work um, because this is not easy right now. It's hard Absolutely. to find the inventory. Is that a legitimate number five? That was a legitimate number five. Is that a, liking okay, your that's agent. A number five that I think we kind of squeaked out. I think we squeaked out. Let's the just proper re agent. redo the, the tips and tricks for <laughs> it's all we got. So I would say screening the proper agent should be like replace number is, one. Like that should five be number one, and then you move it down all the way down the line. I think we kind of cheated number five. I think we should just say it's a four tricks. Four tricks? Because I mean, again, we're assuming you found this is for that's for another yeah. show. Finding the right we, agent. We, went we back assume to you have found the right agent that all the time. Let's just go with the hat tricks since so we got the, the Italian the here. In the the office. Office. We're just gonna go with the hat four tricks. Five, five, four to five. Well, what's three the difference? Tricks, yeah? four, five. <laughs> but now it's like he's gonna bring me down with Albanians, Italians. They do the same thing, yeah, you know, all the time. I'm the hands. All right, man. four is five. Four is good. Five is good. I mean, look, when you have those four. Do you hear him? I mean, I just gave out some really good advice as to how you to You gave good inventory. advice about how you picking the right agent and all that stuff. No, which I whole did not. Were you listening? Not really. Oh, my God. No, I'm just kidding. She broke no, I was, knowledge. But it kind I, of, totally I was, but it, it goes back out. to kind of going to that whole. I think anyone tricks. listening could have got the a continuing education an hour out of that. For sale by owners, social media, canvassing. These are direct hits of like things that you don't typically do when you're house shopping. Right. Your right. agent will do for you in order to find something that doesn't exist or to alleviate the pressure of doing it under the gun. But it's important for our listeners Finding to understand agent, they have to give themselves time because this is not something that patient. happens overnight. They have to have patience. But you can't say give yourself time in order, and that's how you're going to fix this short, you're under the gun. Then you have to start earlier. You have to start Then you won't be under the gun. Then you won't be under the gun, though. the purpose of the show content. Saying you are under the gun, what do you do? Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Then you overpay, right? That's it. Well, no. unfortunately, hey, like you said earlier, you want to go to the big game the day of the game, you're going to pay the most for the ticket. Yeah. Why does it always go back to sports with you guys? It's, it's like, and you want to go to the big show. The, 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 if you want to go to Hamilton, you go to the, Hamilton the last two the, showings, the, 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 it was an arm and a leg to go to Hamilton. For that's, so, for then, that's for sure. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's the way it is. But I think we got four solid tricks and tips yeah. in my Absolutely. opinion. Absolutely. Which is still more than enough. I think yeah, it's really well, good no, information. The truth is that that's here. not really a trick on how to fix the need right now. I think it's just important, uh, you know, at all, at all times, and this is just in any transaction. It's just definitely do your interview process with your real estate agent. Make sure that they're going to be committed and actually going to do these things for you, and actually see if they're actually doing what they say they're going to say they're going to do. Right? You're going to know if you've been working with an agent for two to three weeks and you're not seeing any form of activity or follow up phone calls or urgency in trying to get you to see a property. You may be working with the wrong agent. The last thing is that if this is a school necessity, you actually have to show proof that you own the house in order to really get into the school, right? You right. do. So if you you're do. in a time crunch and you, want, and you want your kid to yeah. make this, the, the, you know, start the opening day of school, if you will, not only do you have to have it on a contract, but you have to have it financed in time. But yeah. see, that's, a, that's that where I thought it. Javier was going uh, with that. Because I've actually seen families that... You don't that own it. You can't be in the school district, man. At least I know from I had some situations. You have to have a HUD settlement. Well, closing disclosure, you know, the HUDs. But you are the owner. And closing you own disclosure, you usually need something of that sort. In certain cases... You need a driver's license and you need... Um, you, but you, you need, need a, a change bill. of address. You need a change of no, address. You, you won't be bill. able to get a bill unless you have some form of ownership over the property. You're you need to be close that bad utilities. boy before it's time. You yeah. can't. A you written need, a contract yeah. is usually not going to fly through some of the better school districts. Right. Because anyone could write up a contract. I love how you're not listening to the mommy who has kids districts. Districts. and CPS with how you have what you need to do to get your kids. That's your school district. My sister bought a piece of property and is under construction, and they still wouldn't let the kid go to the high school there. That's crazy. Until they resided. So she had to start renting. She went through all of it. So every district is different. I'm just telling yeah. you, you should probably own that house if you really want to be secured and moving your Where kid. I thought you were going with that whole thing with buying a condo and be creative. It's I've actually had clients that do buy a, well, a he studio, a one-bedroom condo in the vicinity of Nettlehurst because they wanted to be in that school. Every district But is everything different. was $2 million, $3 million. Yeah. And so we wanted to – and it, she was looking for, what, something that was creative in a special space. So you have to be able to be cre you know, get creative if you're going to get a studio and rent it out. And then now you're in the school 
school district. You yeah, you got to be creative. I, I think being creative is important. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> He's always looking yeah, at me. Dude, amazing. it's hard to get kids into schools these days, and you have to. Then it gives you more time to shop, right? If you're going to be able to buy an investment property, keep it as an investment, and then you find the house of your dreams. And then, you know, obviously, or, you're going to have to find somewhere to put your. Well, well one well, of the things that I've been seeing with like millennials specifically, like they've actually been buying, I've received a couple of investment purchases from millennials because they themselves don't want to settle down or stay in a specific area, but they got money. They just yeah. got a trust fund. They just graduated, graduated got out of college, got a lot of money, and they're like, hey, you know what? I don't want to buy a primary, but I'm interested in buying a condo that I can possibly rent out. Or I'm interested in a two-fly or three-fly that can generate me some income. Well, news to you. Buy in a school district that people want to, you know, who's Absolutely. Buy in a desirable a school district because in that way, you're always going to have a surplus of good people to rent to. Definitely. Awesome. It's the one. end. We can go back and do what we do best, and that is Complaining work. for you? Complaining. Elevating the real estate IQ. No, I gotta go do showings. I have like showings? six showings. Yes, awesome. go back to you know work, right, Greg? Right. They right. don't work. They just sit in the front of grand. a desk computer. La, 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 la. Where are my That's Where are my do. contracts? I live in my car. <laughs> I I live in my car. You should I see live my in car. My desk. <laughs> go <laughs> ahead, too. Nick. Close it out. Go ahead. No, no I'm you enjoying do a my. Job. Well. Coffee. Well. Coffee. That's it. That's it. Under the gun, need to buy a house, and you got to get into a school district really quick. We showed you four legitimate tricks on how to do it today with our special guest, Greg Cerrone. I swear five, but okay. Me. From Metro, what was it pronounced? Metro. Interdome. 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 Interdome Realty. Greg, give us uh, your best contact information. How does everyone get a hold of you if they're looking to, to work with you? Yeah, you could call me uh, right on my cell or text me, 708-415-6755. I'm writing that number. Or go ahead and box me. If you miss something or you wanted to rehash the show, you can obviously watch this along with any of our other shows on our YouTube channel at Market Overdrive along with right here on Facebook for those of you that are watching live. We have quite a few that were watching live. You must be famous, man, um, which is Facebook forward slash Market Overdrive. You can also follow us. You can tweet us. Twitter at Market Overdrive. This is a WGN podcast, so feel free to go to iTunes and download and subscribe to the podcast or just follow the page. But Nonetheless, you will be able to find Greg and this show and all the other shows on our Market Overdrive website and, um, of course, all our social media channels. So with that being said, this show is over. We are going back to work. We will see you again next Wednesday at 10 a.m. And I love your headphones, and I just figured out who you Come look on, like. bring it. See you guys later. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> say you. it. Who is it? That's for the next show. Oh, uh -oh. my God. <laughs>